I'm going to present to you another visualization add-on, uh, the volume timeline. It's a pretty old add-on. It's been in the directory for a while now. Um, let's start, actually, let's start by looking at what is a timeline. Wikipedia defines it as this, a sequence of related events arranged in a chronological order and displayed along a line. This pretty much defines the Vardin timeline as well. Okay, what defines the Vardin timeline? There's a lot of visualization add-ons and chart add-ons available and um, we can best define it by looking at some of the features the Vardin timeline presents. The Vardin timeline is lazy. Um, by this I don't mean it doesn't do the work. Uh, it actually does what a lazy person does. It does the work intelligently. Uh, what it does is actually it only fetches the data which it needs in order to draw the graphs, which means you can have a, you can have a graph with 100 points, you can have a graph with 1,000 points, you can have a graph with 1 million points. It doesn't matter performance-wise. It will always render with an equal performance. Um, the timeline uses the HTML5 canvas. This has some perks compared to other charting tools, which means you don't need any plugins for this. This will work in any recent version of a major browser like Firefox, Opera, Safari, and even, for, and even Internet Explorer 6, 7, or 8. Wait a second. Did I say Canvas and Internet Explorer? No. Um, actually, Internet Explorer does not support the Canvas tag, as you probably know. But what it does here is it uses VML. Uh, VML stands for Vector Markup Language, and it's an <coughs> old la XML language. It's now deprecated. Uh, it was used before SVG was invented. But for some reason, Microsoft had decided that they would support this in all their recent browsers. They prefer this. So what I've done here is the time I use is the VML language to draw the graphs in Internet Explorer. Uh, the timeline supports several types of graphs or several graphs simultaneously. You can draw a multitude of graphs in the timeline. Um, for instance, if you want to compare some related data. It's very easy to draw them and see how they compare. Uh, Timelines support three types of graphs. It supports the uh, line charts, it supports bar charts, and finally it supports scattered charts. Uh, these can be modified style-wise also if you want to. Uh, finally, the timeline supports different kinds of markers. Markers are uh, discontinued. You can use markers to represent discontinuous data. Um, for instance, if you have some kind of events, or like, let's say, a switch got turned on, or if you look at outside temperatures, you can look at when winter time starts and winter time ends. These are basically the features what the timeline has. Okay, so how do we get the data in? Well, before we look at that, I could actually show you what the timeline looks like so you get an idea. Let's go here. Okay, and let's look at it. Okay, here we, here we have a basic, the basic view. Um, I now stretch this to be full screen. Normally, you probably don't have this much. But this is basically what the timeline looks like if you don't configure that much. I've added some colors to the graph, but besides that, I haven't done anything to it. Um, as you can see, we have the main area here. Um, in the main area, all the graphs are displayed. Uh, we have, I've actually added four graphs, and three of them are temperatures, and one is the precipitation. Um, uh, in the bottom of the main area, we have these so-called markers, which I'll talk to you about. Uh, 
we have two types of markers. We have the tooltip types markers, which looks like this, which give a nice tooltip in the bottom. And then we have some bottom type markers, which you can add a click event to. I haven't added them here, but they appear here up here. Mm, in the bottom of the screen, we have the browser, or which you can use to browse the timeline with. Um, it looks like this, you can drag it around. Uh, the timeline will zoom in and get some more data when you release it. Uh, so here you can scroll the timeline to the point you want to look at. You can also zoom in and zoom out like this. Get a better view of your data. And that's pretty much it, what you can do here, down. Uh, then, if we look at the left corner, we have some other controls. As I said, Timeline supports three types of graphs. We have the line charts, we have the bar charts, and we have the scatter chart still. I didn't show you that. <coughs> uh, then we have, above the chart modes, we have some tomb levels. Uh, these are fully customizable by you, the developer. Uh, I've added five tomb levels here. One, a year, two years. Let's put this here. Three years, four years, and five years. So three years. Um, basically, you can add how many tool layers you like, and these probably depend on your data, what your data is like. Uh, on the right hand side of the tomb, we have a date range select. This is the date which is shown in the main area here. Um, by clicking on it, you can manually select the date if you want to. Let's go to 2004. Like that. It will manage the screen. And beside the date range, we have the legend, which will show you a caption for each <coughs> and every graph. As you see, we have <coughs> precipitation as the blue. Hope you look see it, yeah. And then we have mean, minimum, and maximum temperatures displayed. Okay. This is basically what the timeline looks like.